wargaming is actually the study of how people interact in military situations. What we do in the wargaming course, the students are introduced on week two to their real world sponsor from the Department of Defense and often some of our uh, allied nations and then have to design, develop, conduct, and then analyze a war game for that sponsor. We're looking at conducting unconventional warfare with soft forces in a denied environment against a near peer adversary. So this is a particularly interesting question because we've been operating against adversaries that are obviously technologically inferior to us. In our case, our sponsor was U.S. Fleet Forces. And specifically what we were taking a look at was some modern concepts on employing the force to try to develop a Baltic scenario in which we could test out some of those concepts. The Australian Army and the Marine Corps have a wonderful relationship spanning back many years. And interoperability is always something that we're trying to get better at. It's challenging. Once you think you've got it, it slips out of your hands as we modernise uh, and, and warfare changes. So it's something you've always got to put concerted effort into. So looking at how soft forces will need to change, specifically will any of our capabilities need to shift, will any of our training focuses need to shift, how will we need to do things differently in order to adequately uh, fight against a near peer adversary. For us, what we'll want to be able to do is provide a good product for U.S. Fleet Forces to sit there and say, hey, some of the junior officers that most likely will be using these concepts in the, on future battlefields, they comprehend them, they're starting to become oriented to, the, you know, to how to use them, and, and quite honestly, this is, this is how they perceived uh, the concept being best employed. The war game itself, again, went to highlight a lot of small issues with the current force, so the contemporary forces of the Marines and the Australian Army, in particular Australia's amphibious capability and the Marine Rotational Force Darwin. And those small things which in the face of the enemy create big problems are really important to identify up front. So it was great to work with, with wonderful people looking hard uh, at a problem and to walk away with some valuable lessons. We're sitting around a table with a bunch of people with different experiences, with different subject matter expertise, and being able to kind of talk through these problems, I think brings a lot of value added to the table. Not only are we learning more about these important concepts for both the Navy and the Marine Corps, but what we're also seeing is just how much work goes into developing these things and the thought process required so that when it comes time to plan a war game in the future for whether it's a command we're supporting or our parent command, we know how to develop and execute uh, appropriately. I think the future of wargaming is bright. I'm guardedly optimistic. The challenges we still have to face that are ahead of us are to convince our senior leaders where wargaming really fits in a spectrum of tools to do analysis and to get a better understanding of operational necessities. And I think the Naval Postgraduate School is probably one of the very few institutions that has a robust wargaming education program to bring wargaming to the forefront and to get experienced wargaming practitioners that senior leaders can leverage. The Naval Postgraduate School in the Australian Army, in particular the Australian Army Headquarters, has had a long and fruitful relationship. Activities such as this really, really bring us together uh, and reinforce why it's important to maintain those relationships between academic institutions full of free thinkers and, and military establishments. We continue to get a lot out of the relationship and we're certainly looking forward to continuing that relationship in the future.